I think we could be far better than this. I think we could be into percentages of stadiums. I don't think it should be 2,000 fans or 4,000 fans in tiers. I think it should be in percentages of stadiums. Meaning what? Well, I, I think that we should be looking at somewhere in a region... The bigger the stadium, the bigger the capacity. Well, yeah, I, well, I think there should be a percentage of the stadium that's allowed in rather than a fixed number. So, for example, 25% of the stadium should be enabled to be allowed inside football stadium because I don't think in any other part of the country there is going to be anything besides hospitals that are more sanitised, more drilled down and have more protocols than football stadiums. If I'm saying 25% of a stadium, then at Crystal Palace you get 6,000 fans in rather yeah. than two or 4,000. At Manchester United you get 18,000 fans in rather than, uh, rather than 75,000 fans or 19,000 fans. What is the science behind 2,000 people being allowed into a 75,000-seater stadium? Well, OK, you can get 2,000 people into Old Trafford, by that logic, if they're in Tier 2. So you can get 2,000 people into Rochdale. Rochdale has a, have a capacity of maybe 8,000. Man United have a capacity of 75,000. Where's the logic in that? Moving forward, I think we've got to be more ambitious with the plans because ultimately it's a percentage of stadiums that we should be looking at. The science, <clears throat> we are being told forever and a day, yeah. despite my disagreement with the idea that the R rate has a 30, 20, sometimes a 20% variant in scientific information, we're being told constantly that the science defines what we do. Right. So tell me what's, where we get the number for 2,000 people to go into a 75,000-seater stadium and 2,000 people to go into a 4,000-seater stadium. Tell me where the science in that sits. Well, the science in it, Simon, there's also sense in it, surely, because the, if you increase that, you've got more fans travelling, you'll have more okay. fans in concourses. Okay. Well, the, the, the number that's being suggested, surely, is a logical you, then, one Then, at then you stage. look at the stress test and say, where does this break? OK, travelling. OK, then we will only allow season ticket holders that come within the geographical postcode of a mile or two mile from the stadium of the club that they support to be able to come. So you take travelling out of the right, equation. Right, you eliminate that. So okay, you eliminate that. You. Right. you eliminate the amount of space that can be used inside concourses you don't open all the concessions you don't open the environments where people mill about you make it accessible only for seating and seating alone you open up four sides of the stadium you steward properly and you facilitate social distancing by having commercial disciplines amongst your stewarding okay. but you're sitting there and we're, and we're being grateful and we should be grateful to some extent but we should also be ambitious and say hold on a second here this is not a panacea this is not the ultimate solution it's the very early stages of it and don't forget Jim, a lot of these lower league clubs will have taken season ticket money already. So they're not getting anything that they're not getting any financial benefit out of it. All they're getting is a bit of feel about the club. And that's right. great. Okay. But they need money. Talk me through this then. According to you, like areas in tier one with the lowest yeah. risk, uh, four thousand attending yeah. the stadiums. What do you think? Is a, is a more realistic figure. Well, I have always felt that it should be a percentage of the stadium as long as the facilitation... Well, how many? How many? Well, I, I think it should be 25% of a stadium. Now, people are going to say, that's 19,000 fans going into Old Trafford, right? But, but with the best will in the world, if Manchester United can provide the environment to segregate, to remove the travel parameters in terms of geographical postcode selection for people that come in, right? And people say, well, that's not fair. Well, that's just the way it is, right? That's the way yeah. we're having to embrace this. Yeah, but Sam, and how do you stagger probably, that? 19,000 well, turning up to well, Old Trafford. You, 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 you stagger, how do you let them you stagger in? it in such a way that you... Some have got to arrive at 11 in the morning. You, well, that's what it is. That's what it is. You facilitate the solution by saying, you guys, you 4,500, you come in at 11. You 4,500, you come in at 12. You 4,500 come in at 1, and you 4,500 come in at 2. That's how you do it. Well, you people can... sit in the stadium for four hours. Well, it is what it is, Jim. They'll hang about the concourses. It, it is what it is. Well, OK, I accept there's an argument there. No, if, you know, there is an element of keeping them in their seats, balancing it off, and I understand that there's a... They won't know, keep socially but, distant. But if you, if, you, if you operate four... If you've got four sides of a stadium, OK, so each side of the stadium has 18,000 for, say, Man United, say, just for ease of translation, right, right? right? Then you open those four sides of the stadium, have very definite access points, and 4,500 come in at 1 o'clock on one side of the stadium, 4,500 on another side, 4,500 on another side. Right. There are logistical solutions to this. I'm not saying it's ideal. I'm not saying it's as cut and shut as I'm making right, it. Right, but you're saying but fans I, I come think, back, sure, but be more ambitious. I think so. I so think for 4,000, you say 19,000 in Tier 1. What about Tier 2? You, you're asking... No, 2,000. You're, you're asking me to put statistics based upon the, the dynamics of what we're looking at now. But it's now. all about numbers. Well, of course it is, but I'm pushing back and saying, OK, if you can put 2,000 in the Royal Albert Hall or wherever it was <laughs> yeah. for Arsene Wenger, right. where is the logic? I understand the travel argument. Take that out of the way. I understand the concourses. Take some of that out of the way, right? I'm not. I, I hear your argument, Jim, of yeah. fifteen thousand people. But if you're going to test two hundred thousand people, you're going to get fifteen thousand positive cases of a disease that's very infectious. If you get two hundred people dying with COVID, 
not necessarily of COVID, you're going to have that statistic to contend with as well. But we have to move society on. Yeah. And part of that is sport. Right? And part of that is not overemphasizing the importance of sport, but notwithstanding that, if we can put 2,000 people inside indoor events and look towards bringing theatres and other things back, then 2,000 fans inside Old Trafford makes no sense to me <laughs> with Simon. the same 2,000 that go into Rochdale. It yeah. makes no sense to me. Yeah, but what would the reaction be, though? I've done it and announced, yeah, you, you can come back to stadiums. Now, the plan is this. Uh, a, a, a club like Manchester United and a stadium like Old Trafford, 19,000 can come back. Su to be, hold on, hold on. Out of Subject to very strict criteria, which the government will detail. If you meet this criteria of every aspect of every single box ticks, we will give you up to 25%. And then it's on football. It's on football to say, right, we've got to do every single thing to meet the government criteria, rather than an arbitrary 2,000 fans for a stadium that has 4,000 capacity, 2,000 fans for a stadium that has 76,000 capacity. It makes not a lot of scientific sense. It's, but I also believe, Jim... It's risky. Well, Good God, it's risky. Crossing the road sometimes. Those numbers. Sometimes crossing the road is risky, Jim, and we have to look at the world and opening up society and moving forward as best we can. If you've got a stadium that takes 4,000 people in it as its capacity, right, and you've got a stadium that takes 76,000 people in it, you're invariably going to have 15 times the amount of toilets and opportunities and environments and facilities inside far bigger stadiums than you're going to have in smaller ones. Right. So whilst it's not ideal, and my, my number might be wrong at 25%, I think that if we're going to take arbitrary figures, we should at least know why. Why?